It's one of the funniest things in the world when you take a look at NHL fans from different fan bases who like to talk and joke around about how their favorite hockey team is playing a rigged hockey game. Oh my gosh, the Toronto Maple Leafs just lost to a 42-year-old Zamboni driver who works for the team. It's gotta be rigged. Oh no, the Vancouver Canucks just had two straight goal-tending performances by Thatcher Demko that took them over the Vegas Golden Knights in games number five and six of the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. It must be rigged. Oh my gosh, I can't believe the Toronto Maple Leafs ended up losing 4-3 in overtime after they choked away a 3 Nothing lead. It must be rigged. And for the most part, it's, uh, yeah, it's never rigged. Spoiler alert for all of those who are thinking that there's a sense of truth to the idea of rigging NHL games. It doesn't really happen like that. Rarely will you find a scenario where NHL players are capable, willing to, and actually successful in throwing their own hockey games, which they are a part of, for the sake of external causes. But if you take your spotlight and you shine it away from the NHL, you go over to the second tier Swedish Pro League, the Allsvenskan. We had ourselves a game yesterday that actually is being heavily speculated towards being rigged. Let's go over yesterday's game on Monday, December 14th, between, and I'm gonna butcher this right here, the IF Björkloven and the Mora IK. Now, these teams are two teams in the Allsvenskan. It's the second-tier pro league. It's the AHL of Sweden. You take a look at the SHL, which is the number one league in Sweden, and then right underneath that is the Allsvenskan. There's a relegation promotion system over there, so the best teams from the Allsvenskan and the worst teams in the SHL year after year, they swap places depending on who wins the relegations and all that stuff. There's a qualifier that goes on, but... The Allsvenskan saw ourselves a game yesterday between the Björkloven and the Mora. And if you take a look at the standings the way they are now after the game, you can see that Björkloven was one of the top teams in the entire league. With 47 points behind Timra IK's 53, they are second out of 14 clubs. Mora is over here at seventh, so they are quite literally in the very middle of the pack. But what we saw yesterday was a game that had a whole bunch of weird betting things going on to it, and the score in itself was quite weird, too. Because starting off this Björklevin Mora IK game, we had ourselves what was a 3-0 lead for Björklevin after about 9-ish minutes in the first period. It was a team at the top facing off against a team in the middle, and everybody who was looking at this was like, okay, because they're a good team, of course they're going to take a 3 nothing lead. It only took them 10 minutes to do it, but now it's easier for us to place our bets because, you know, sports betting is a very big thing. But... After Björklevin led the game 3 nothing, the Mora IK came back and they scored... 8 goals straight. They scored a goal with 9 minutes left in the first, they scored 4 in the second period, then they scored 3 in the third, and then you had yourselves another Björklevin goal to end the game at an 8-4 loss. And normally, games like these don't really happen, but they do happen once in a while. Once in a while, we do see NHL teams choke away 3-0 leads and end up losing 7-3, for example. The Vancouver Canucks did that exact same thing with Eddie Lack, I believe, against the New York Islanders at home. That was a terrible game. So it does happen where you see these leads, 3-0, get choked away like that. But the circumstances behind this, the fact that it was one of the best teams in the Oscars can choking away a lead like this, also combined with the fact that as this game went on, we had ourselves some really weird updates on the sports betting web pages that they actually shut down. Let's go over onto the Berkelevens website because they have themselves a short little article written about this game. In the aftermath of Björklevin's 8-4 loss against Mora, it's been speculated that players from Björklevin were involved in match fixing and deliberately acted in a way that benefited the opposing team. Björklevin's CEO takes the suspicion seriously and welcomes a thorough investigation. He has some quotes talking about how, you know, we want to make sure this is sorted out properly, this suspicion is serious, but if it turns out to be true, that our players were purposefully tanking this game for the sake of increasing the potential earnings for people who are betting on this game, 
It is of course completely unacceptable and something that should never occur in our association. These players are trained in what applies to Bjorklevin, and this is so far from the culture we stand for. He then says in the second paragraph he has a tough time believing that anyone on the Bjorklevin team would actually purposefully throw the game. However, if you take a look at some of the clips, because this article was tweeted out on the Twitter. By the way, Bjorklevin is actually tweeting about this. They're the ones who published this article talking about how their game might have been rigged. So it's kind of funny, you know. Think about it from a third-person point of view. It's like a team that is being accused of rigging their own hockey games published an article on their own website about how people are suspicious of them rigging their own hockey games. It's kind of funny how they're the ones coming out here and talking about it, but it was tweeted out. It was Chris Johnston who then tweeted about this story, allegations that members of the team fixed the game in order to get a loss. Bjorklevin was up 3-0 after the first period at home and surrendered the next seven goals. So much money was bet on Mora that the odds changed in unusual ways, and the game was eventually removed from many bets betting sites. There were some people that were actually tweeting out screenshots of the betting. This is from Bet365. It's a website, I believe, where you can place bets on sports teams. And there were apparently some odd things going on with the results, because if you bet on a certain team to win, you can win more money if that team actually wins. You know how betting works, right? But this indeed was published also on a Sport Bladet article that we're going to take a look at as well, translated from Swedish into English. It talks about how the game was eventually stopped. In addition, we also had paused payouts for this game. People who were betting on the game wouldn't actually get their money if they betted right. We've noticed deviating odds that gave rise to suspicions that made it possible to question the sporting integrity of this hockey game. The rest of the article then specifically goes over what exactly happened with the odds, talking about how when Bjorklovin was up 3-0 in the first period, they had about a 1.3 odds, even though they should have had somewhere around the 1.5 odds range. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know too much about the odds and the betting and all that, but the fact that it's actually being published here and described as abnormal is indeed something that I do see value in talking about. It's actually the same point that Chris Johnston made as well, that the betting and the odds for these teams were so unusual that sports betting sites just canned the game and didn't allow people to actually make money off of it. And furthermore to this point, we had ourselves some people like this man, Anton J85 on Twitter, who tweeted out some of the gifts of this game, who showed off what exactly was going on on the ice, and it's kind of weird. Some of the defensive plays made by this green team, Bjorklevin, were... Yeah, they were really bad. Like, they let guys walk in right through the middle, get some nice open chances in front. The goalie didn't really go down to try to make any saves. Then we had some other chances where the team that lost Bjorklevin had the puck rushing into the zone, and they tried a little bit of a cross crease, but it really didn't work. They missed the mark by a mile, and the guy who was going to receive the pass fell down into the boards. There were some really weird things going on in this game just based off of the gifts that I've seen because unfortunately I didn't get up early yesterday to watch Tier 2 Swedish Hockey. We have ourselves another tweet over here from Robin Fredriksson talking about the actual odds and actually illustrating what happened with the odds. This is what the odds were ahead of the game, and then these are the odds that happened when Bjorklevin was up 3-1. to one. So much money was being put on a Mora comeback that you got better odds on Bjorklevin winning when they were up two goals than you did before the game. Now, again, I don't know what this means, but my guess is, and if this is incorrect, someone feel free to comment down in the comments because I don't know how this stuff works, but because there were so many people who were betting on a comeback by Muda, which was a whole bunch of weight being sent over to the Mora IK winning the hockey game, it pushed the Bjorklovin odds a little bit higher to those who did bet on it because the weight of the betting for other people at least, was shifted so much towards one side. That's just kind of how I interpret it. Obviously, it's probably not correct. So talk to me in the comments about that if it is indeed incorrect. But this is a story that we'll have to keep up with as it goes on. At the end of the day, it's one hockey game between one of the best teams in the Allsvenskan and one of the mid-tier teams in the Allsvenskan, where a very weird comeback was staged, where the team that blew the lead just really stopped playing well. They had a whole bunch of terrible highlights, and as a result, it pushed a lot of these sports betting sites over the wall, and it actually caused the betting to slow down and actually halt. So that's why there's an investigation. Once this is concluded, we'll see if the rigged hockey game actually 
actually does exist. But for now, talk to me in the comments what you think. I hope you enjoyed this Fidesz Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>